I dreamt I dwelt in marble halls, and each damp thing that creeps and crawls went wobble, wobble on the walls. Faint odours of departed cheese, blown on the dank, unwholesome breeze, awoke the never-ending sneeze. <coughs> Strange pictures decked the arras drear. Strange characters of woe and fear, the humbugs of the social sphere. One showed a vain and noisy prig that shouted empty words and big at him that nodded in a wig. And one, a dotard grim and grey, who wasteth childhood's happy day in work more profitless than play. Whose icy breast no pity warms, whose little victims sit in swarms and slowly sob on lower forms. And one, a green time-honoured bank, where flowers are growing wild and rank, like weeds that fringe a poisoned tank. All birds of evil omen there flood with rich notes the tainted air, the witless wanderer to snare. The fatal notes neglected fall, no creature heeds the treacherous call, for all those goodly strawn baits pour. The wandering phantom broke and fled, straightway I saw within my head a vision of a ghostly bed, where lay two worn, decrepit men, the fiction of a lawyer's pen who never more might breathe again. The serving man of Richard Rowe wept, inarticulate with woe, she wept, that waiting on John Doe. Oh, rouse, I urged, the waning sense with tales of tangled evidence of suit, demurrer, and defence. Vain, she replied, such mockeries for morbid fancies such as these, no suits can suit, no plea can please. And bending o'er that man of straw, she cried in grief and sudden awe, not inappropriately, Law! The well-remembered voice he knew. He smiled. He faintly muttered, Sue. Her very name was legal, too. The night was fled. The dawn was nigh. A hurricane went raving by and swept the vision from mine eye. Vanished that dim and ghostly bed, the hangings, tape, the tape was red, happy tis o'er, and Doe and Roe are dead. Oh, yet my spirit inly crawls, what time it shudderingly recalls that horrid dream of marble halls.